What's up, cinephiles? My name is TJ, and welcome to Cinematech. And this is not your weekly news wrap-up. This is something a little different. We've been talking about TIFF a lot on this channel, and I think it would be a great idea to go through the vast amount of films that are going to be at the festival and pick out some lists of films that I think are worth watching, depending on what your goals and objectives are at TIFF. And even if you're not going to TIFF, these lists could be pretty great for you to get ready for award season or to at least keep certain films on your radar so you can see them in the future when and if they become available. Now the reason we're doing this is that TIFF is a daunting festival. This year there are 333 films in the festival, 245 of which are feature length films. So you have a lot of choices. And we all know that choice is the enemy of decision. So here are some lists of films. There are five films per list, and I'm gonna go through my reasoning for picking them as well. So let's start off with the first list, the films that you should see if your only reason to go to TIFF is to see movie stars. Before I get into this, I also wanna say that there's no guarantee that all of the actors I talk about in this particular list will be at the screening, so keep that in mind. Also, because this list is based around the attendance of actors and because you want to be around famous people, you must go to the premiere. There is no guarantee that any of the actors involved with the film are going to be at any of the other screenings. It's just gonna be the premiere, if at all. So please keep that in mind. So the first film is an obvious one. It's Knives Out by Rain Johnson. No! This is a utterly stacked lineup of actors, and if they all show up, it's going to be insane being in that Q&A session once the film is over. The list of actors includes Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anna D. Armas, Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Tony Collette, Christopher Plummer, and even Frank Oz, like the freaking voice of Yoda might be in this screening. So yeah, if you wanna get bang for your buck as far as stargazing, it's this film. Next up we have Hustlers by Lorraine Scafaria. And the big reason to go to this is that Cardi B might be on the red carpet. You also have the likes of Jennifer Lopez, Julia Stiles, Constance Wu, and Lily Reinhardt being in attendance, but just imagine what will happen to Tiff if Cardi B comes to the screening of Hustlers. It will be incredible. And if she's there, you can bet she's doing a Q&A afterwards. It's gonna be great. Next up is Dolomite Is My Name by Craig Brewer. This is a Netflix film, and it includes the likes of Eddie Murphy, Keegan-Michael Key, Mike Epps, Craig Robinson, Titus Burgess, Snoop Dogg, T.I., and even Wesley Snipes. Imagine Wesley Snipes doing a Q&A for a film. It's perfect. It's wonderful. Film number four on this list is Lucy in the Sky by Noah Hawley. This features Natalie Portman, John Hamm, Zazie Beetz, Ellen Bernstein, Nick Offerman, and a few others. Natalie Portman traditionally comes to TIFF. She was there for the premiere of Vox Lux last year, and she's typically pretty great to see live. So going to the premiere of Lucy in the Sky, I think would be a pretty good one. And finally, we have Marriage Story by Noah Baumbach. Uh this film features Scarlett Johansson, Adam Driver, Laura Dern, Alan Alda, and Ray Liotta, among some others. So once again, pretty good amount of stars that you could get to see if you show up for the premiere. Once again, I can't guarantee their attendance, but there's usually a pretty good shot. Some of these premieres are gala premieres, and I'm pretty sure TIFF has rules in place that most, if not all, of your main cast must be in attendance for a gala premiere. So you can have a bit of assurance that all the people you want to see are going to be there. Just don't blame me if they don't show up. It's not my fault. Next up, we have a list of five films that you should go see at TIFF if you want to get a jump on awards season. The first one is Pain and Glory by Pedro Almodovar. We heard out of Khan that Antonio Banderas was getting a lot of buzz and a lot of people were predicting him to have an Oscar run for Best Lead Actor. And if he gets in for Best Lead Actor, there's an outside chance that Pedro Almodovar will also get nominated for Best Director. So who knows how this is all going to turn out. All I know is that Antonio Banderas has a shot, and this film is worth seeing for that reason alone, if not the many others. I've heard nothing but good things about this movie. The next film is Parasite by Bong Joon-ho. And this should be no surprise, this is a lock for at least getting nominated for the Best Foreign Language Film category at the Academy Awards. It won Cannes, it won a bunch of awards at other festivals after premiering at Cannes, and South Korea 
just announced that it will be the official entry for Best Foreign Language Film at the Oscars. The next one is The Lighthouse. And this might seem like a weird pick because the material, at least based on the trailer that I've seen, doesn't really fall into what the Academy typically goes for. Black and white, full frame, kind of weird. The last film that Robert Eggers directed was The Witch, and it has that kind of working against it. But the buzz out of Cannes was that Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe could each earn nominations for their performances in The Lighthouse, and I think that's a good enough reason to go see this film at TIFF if you're able. Next up is A Hidden Life by Terrence Malick. There isn't really much to say about this other than it's a Terrence Malick film about a guy standing up to Nazis, absolutely gonna be a Best Picture nominee, we should just move on. The last film on this list is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. It's my odds on pick to win the People's Choice Award at TIFF, which usually means you're gonna win Best Picture at the Oscars. So to me, this film's gonna get a Best Picture nomination at the very least, and everyone's talking about Tom Hanks' performance and it being very, very good. Depending on whether or not they go for Best Lead Actor or Best Supporting Actor is still up in the air from what I'm hearing, but if you're the kind of person who loves seeing the award season films before award season actually starts, you gotta go see this movie at TIFF. It's gonna be one of the big ones when the red carpets start getting rolled out. And that's about all I have to say about that. The next list is for people who want to check out amazing new talent. These are all feature debuts, and from the looks of it, very strong feature debuts. For all of the films in this section, I'm gonna be giving you a little brief snippet of what TIFF says the movie is about. First up is Black Conflicts by Nicole Dorsey. The film is, according to TIFF, about the seemingly separate lives of an anxious, delusioned teen girl and a troubled, alienated man converging fatefully in this haunting exploration of womanhood, isolation, and toxic masculinity. The topics they're touching on are obviously relevant, and the trailer that they've produced for it looks pretty great as well. You can check out trailers for all of these films at the TIFF Trailers YouTube page. There'll be a link for it down below. Highly suggest you check that out. And all in all, Black Complex looks pretty good. Next up, we have Bring Me Home by Kim Sung Woo. And according to TIFF, this one is about a dedicated mother in search of her missing son follows a tip that leads her to a fishing village where corrupt police officers might have the answers for her mystery. I don't know much about this film beyond that plot synopsis, but I do know that Lee Young-A, the lead actress from Park Chan-wook's Lady Vengeance, is playing the lead in this film. So you can put this one on my must-see list. The next film in this list of amazing new talents is Wrath by Harry Sepka. And the plot synopsis reads a little bland, to be honest. A woman's deadbeat life changes when she meets her new best friend. Yep, that's it. However, I have taken a look at the trailer and it looks touching and absurd and it's a Canadian film so it automatically piques my interest and based on the aesthetics that I've seen in the trailer and I believe the clip that are also available on the TIFF Trailers YouTube page, it looks like it fits my ideal for what Canadian cinema should be and based on that, it makes me want to see it. And if you want a little bit of a clue into what I think Canadian cinema should be, you can look at films from last year's festival like Mouthpiece or Firecrackers. That's where I think we should be going, and I think this film fits that mold. The next film being made by an exciting new voice is Simple Woman by Charya Malta. This one is about, and once again to quote Tiff, a director with epilepsy trying to make a film about the life of famed Romanian actor Elena Lowenson discovers that her real life subject bears little resemblance to the star that she idolized. I don't know much about this film. I don't know if that actress that I just talked about is actually real. I should have probably checked that before recording this. But I do know that this is the opening night film for Discovery, and they don't put bad films at the very start. So this one's probably good and worth checking out. Finally, in the list of exciting new voices, we have The Platform by Galder Gestello Iretia. To quote Tiff, the plot of this film is as such. In a future dystopia, prisoners housed in vertically stacked cells watch hungrily as food descends from above, feeding the upper tiers, but leaving those below ravenous 
and radicalized. Now this seems like a pretty on the nose social commentary, but the fact that it's playing in Midnight Madness as opposed to Discovery is to me a pretty good sign that it is worth watching. The next list of films are films that you should see because you probably won't get the chance to ever see them again. And this is something that happens quite a bit at TIFF. They pull in so many films that they actually get a lot of films from regions where those films don't end up being released in North America. So this literally might be one of the only times these films screen at all. The first film is a film that I've talked about before. It is Balloon by Pemet Tesden. I saw the director's previous film, Jimpa, at TIFF last year, and then it disappeared from the face of the earth. If you try finding it on streaming services, in Canada at least, you cannot find it, it doesn't exist, and that's awful, which is why I put Balloon on this list, because I am equally afraid that it is going to disappear. The next film is The Lost Orokoshi by Abba Makama. Now this one looks pretty visually interesting. Also, it's from Nigeria, and honestly, it's really difficult to see films produced in Africa in North America. They often don't travel. So when you have the chance to see a film from Africa made by Africans, please go see it, because you never know if you are ever going to go have the chance to see a film like that ever again. The next film is Our Lady of the Nile, and this is actually the opening night film for the Contemporary World Cinema Program. So there is a chance it's going to get picked up and released, but once again, it is a film from Rwanda, Africa, and there are co-production partners in there from Belgium and France and I believe one other country. So maybe this film travels a bit better than say The Last Okoroshi, but you can never be sure. The next film is Bakuru by Kibler Mendoka Filho and Giuliano Donaire. Now this one already screened in competition at Cannes, which is a big deal, and it won a jury prize also at Cannes, which is also a big deal. Now I'm putting this on the list of films you should see because they might disappear because it is a Brazilian film. And just as I have been talking about films from Africa not traveling that well to North America, neither do South American films travel that well to North America. It's not as bad, but it's still not great. But like I said, this film did really well at Cannes, and so if you have the chance, Please go see it at TIFF. Finally, we have the film Saturday Fiction by Liu Yu. And I don't really know much about this film, aside from what they tell you about the plot on the TIFF website. So to quote, In 1941, a Chinese actress returns to Japanese-occupied Shanghai, but her true motivations become complicated as she learns of the imminent Pearl Harbor attack and struggles to differentiate friend from undercover enemy. Based on what I've read, just on what they post about it on TIFF, it sounds like a bit of a smaller film. It doesn't really have representation or distribution yet, so there's always a chance it's just going to disappear. And now we have the category that puts the gory in category. Haha, <laughs> I'm probably not going to include that in the video because it was super bad, but still, these are the films for the people who just want to see weird stuff. And we can't start a category like that without talking about Color Out of Space by Richard Stanley. This film is essentially Nicolas Cage in a psychedelic H.P. Lovecraft short story adaptation directed by the guy who got fired from directing The Island of Dr. Moreau. It's gonna be fantastic, or it's gonna be a train wreck. Either way, it's gonna be fun. Next up, for the people who like weird stuff, it's First Love by Takeshi Miike. And this is a film that we've talked about a lot on the channel, we successfully predicted that it was going to be a Midnight Madness, so props to us. And this sounds like the perfect film if you're into a bunch of violence and craziness, as Takeshi Miike is pretty much known for. The film is about a doomed boxer and a haunted drug addict who find themselves inadvertently caught in the crosshairs of two warring gangs. There's going to be so much death, so much mayhem. I checked out the trailer for it today, and as soon as I saw a sword present, I was like, yep. That's going to be used to dismember a lot of people. This is going to be a good one for the blood and guts crowd. Next up for the people who are into weird stuff, The 20th Century by Matthew Rankin. And this is for the people who are into very different ways of visually telling a story. It is essentially a bizarre biopic about William Lyon Mackenzie King. And I know that future TJ is just editing this whole section with a photo of a man wearing a paper bag. So you know 
the visual aesthetic that this film is going for. This is what the whole film looks like. There won't always be a man wearing a paper bag, but it will look somewhat similar to this. This man is beautiful. Appreciate this man. The next film on this list for people who like their films a little bit weirder is The Antenna by Ogren Behra. The plot synopsis reads, the inhabitants of an apartment building are caught in a living nightmare when a radical new communications technology goes horribly awry. It definitely feels like a Cronenbergian type film from the early 80s, and I am definitely going to this one. And the last film on this list for people who like weird stuff is appropriately titled Crazy World. And it is by a person whose name is either Ig or you just say I-G-G, and their last name is Nabwana. But this film looks like an absolute riot. It is about a group of child snatchers who accidentally kidnap a bunch of kids who are super good at kung fu. And then the hijinks just ensue from there. And that are all the films that I think are worth checking out, depending on how you fall into these different categories. I think it would actually be kind of cool if someone tried to go see all 25 of them, and I think you'd end up seeing a very good cross-section of all of what the festival has to offer. That said, there are a lot of films that I had to leave out because I'm trying to keep these lists kind of small, keep this video kind of short so you don't have to stare at my face this whole time telling you which films to go see. But in any case, I hope this video was helpful for you, and I hope it helps you make some good decisions going into TIFF. And if any of these films turn out to be bad, please tell me in the comments below so I know to feel shame for myself. I need that more often in my life. Thank you for watching Cinephiles. Please make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification for more videos about TIFF. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. And if you disliked it, then you can hit the dislike button if you want to, but you'd be kind of a jerk if you did that. Hitting the like button is what cool people do. And don't you want to be cool? I'm rambling at this point, I'm tired. Have a good one, enjoy TIFF, and I'll see you on the channel in a few days.